We we long for George, the days of George. <laughs> right yeah. now. Bring back George. Like, what, you just want to go to war in the Middle East? Yeah, yeah well, that's cool. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> that great guy, man. He owned a baseball team. He was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and what a golfer. He had it right. And yeah, and a fine little dancer, too. A lot of people don't know that about. But it's about, true that uh, maybe George Bush sort of, he may have sort of set the, set things in motion a little bit because I think it was clear with him that he had father issues. Do you know what I mean? He was, he yeah. was very like an Umbrella Academy sibling <laughs> in that he was trying to sort of live up to his father's expectations. Welcome to the Earth Locker. I'm Byron Knight, your co-host. Rob, Tom, and I are on a mission to make us all better Earthlings. So, along with talks about health, meditation, and sustainability, we have some conversations that just need to happen, like this one with our amazing guests, the actor, outspoken crusader, and all-around cool guy, Ron Perlman. If anyone has a passion for life, it's this amazing person. Now, this is our Get Out and Vote podcast, so you know what that means. Lots of swearing. Listen in and get fired up with loads of laughs and political commentary with our guests on The Earth Locker. We're all living in Episode 20 with Ron Perlman, and I've got a color card on my face. The f- oh, for the f- Porsche, Porsche. We started like rejecting his. Like it used to be the thing when we first started going at me, Laura was like, "Hello, me and my brother." There's and- a cable in front of that lens. You fucking amateur! <laughs> no, in front of the actual lens. Can you see it? Can you see it? You see it? Is it because it why is that, why is that? It's because the camera it? is so enthusiastic right, to record it. The camera recording. wants to see us. <laughs> All right, Ron Perlman episode of the Earth Locker. Ron Perlman. Hellboy. For those of you. Who've been living under a rock. <laughs> Ron Perlman is famed industrialist, acrobat, and... <laughs> He's a contortionist. Most commonly known for his acrobatic skills. But he can bend right backwards. <laughs> like a small Chinese circus performer. An incredible contortionist. Quite amazing. Yes. He can also save the earth from um, sort of hellish beings. While, yeah. While, yeah. while being while one. Dressed in the ca- <laughs> while being a hellish being. is He's possibly most noted for his... his Tour de Force performance as Hellboy, the original yeah. Hellboy. I, I think he's living for a lot of shit. Though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Including I, what you were just researching, his his basically his arm wrestling online on, uh, on Twitter. Yeah. No way. With, is it arm wrestling online with Trump apologists? No, like his 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 Twitter feed is like a barroom brawl. It's brutal. It's great. It's good yeah. Fun. Well, I've seen a lot of the stuff that he says, and he's very vocal about it. Yeah. And it's like it's brilliant. Yeah. You know, right, to see good. someone. It's good crack. <laughs> so, we, so Rob's oh, made us some. Uh, Shit. It's. it's uh, do you know what? Uh, what? I bought. I, bu- I bought that teapot on the way home one day from Epping Forest. Actually, then when I got it home, it was broke in about four places. I just assumed you picked it up on the end of the road. Yeah, you know, this is one I actually paid for for a change. You want a towel? Yeah, I'm after fucking up the pour in that one. <laughs> 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 Rob, yeah. Rob people know this, but Rob Sheehan was raised with wolves. <laughs> and yeah. apparently not teapots. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just with them. They occasionally babysat. Uh, we got some blue roll. Yeah. So yeah, let's um, kick some ass. I mean, we're about, we're, it's about Ron o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, he'll be, we see him in the waiting room, then we know he's all good. All right. Not there yet, he'll be like, oh my God. So I would explain the little Zoom. Movie magic that we do here on the podcast. Yep, the movie that I know him best for is City of Lost Children. Yeah, mm. that's my favorite film. Cité les enfants perdus. And he's in. Um, I always f- like him in. Uh, uh, is it Driver? Drive? Yeah. Driver? To oh yeah, Drive. Yeah. yeah, it's a great movie. That it is. It's it's it's. Uh, although one in one issue I had, and someone put it. Well, to me, it was like, in the start of that movie, he establishes his rules mm. as the driver. And then at the beginning of the second act, or the end of the second act, he breaks all of his rules. All the rules, yeah. And then, my mate's issue with it was that the film just carried on, in terms of its pacing, sort of at the same tempo, which was already quite slow and atmospheric. Mm. Do you mean? So yeah, yeah. When he started to enact his revenge and all that, it just... It didn't. It didn't change gear like a. Like I you'd know what you a mean. Yeah. Movie like Drive would. It was almost yeah. It's almost like his heart rate didn't change. Yeah, <laughs> you know? the movie's heart rate didn't change. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, <laughs> what what kind of drives it though? Drives it? No pun intended. Um, which it, I and I I love this in most things you know as we do in uh, our show, but the music in Drive mm. is brilliant. Yeah, that real eighties synth. I've never yeah. seen the movie. I don't know. Oh, Byron, cool, it's a great movie. Yeah, check out a cool artist called Kaczynski. Mm. He did some cool tracks for yeah. the Drive soundtrack. Yeah, he's got yeah. some. Uh, it's almost like speaking of a heartbeat. It feels like that. There's like this. Underneath a lot of it, and it's kind of just that is what sort of keeps it that gives it a lot of momentum, I think, because it, yeah. like, it is very. So, I mean, the guy hardly speaks in it, no. Gosling. Yeah, he, he doesn't talk much. That was one thing I slightly, slightly irked me about it, only because the bits where they do talk was done in montage. Excuse me, that's right. right. I will admit, yeah. Ron, to the uh, with the, the uh, let's get him in. The, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Earth Locker podcast, Olympic heavyweight, <laughs> acrobat, politician, all round sex object, Mr. Ron Perlman. <laughs> oh, the timing of that was beautiful. <laughs> Hello, sir. What's going on, Ron? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, New York shaman, Ron Perlman. <laughs> What's up, fellows? <laughs> one of you, I, one of you, I know. <laughs> hey, Ron. I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. And I'm Byron. Oh, okay. And these are Robbie my bodyguards. Gonna, I, knew Robbie, I knew Robbie was going to have to get bodyguards with this, this yeah. uh, weird, weird performance he gives yeah. in Umbrella Academy. <laughs> 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 and another, un, another uncategorizable piece of. <laughs> Piece of acting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Praise from Caesar, sir. Thank you. Oh my God! So, I, well, I think I, I think I had a chance to tell you that the first time around when, when, during our East London. Didn't we have? Didn't we? Didn't we tooled we? around East London the last day. I remember. We did. Right? We got drunk in that pub on. Uh, I think it was on Cambridge Heath Road or Bethnal Green Road. Love. Oh, I wish I could remember the name. of That's that place. right. That's the one. Yeah. Was it yeah, the hair? Your or the arms. It was the. It was a lovely sort of old, old timey cocktail bar, and it was wedged oh, to the roof. Satan's whiskers. That's the one. Yeah, Satan's whiskers. I think so. Okay, I'm a little offended that you're in East London and didn't bring you to my bar because that's how yeah. I know Rob. Yes, yeah. I used to sling him. Really? He used to. He used to hacking. kick me out of his bar regularly and next to London Fields. Mainly because he was getting well, undressed. It's probably why he was barred at the time. That's why. <laughs> Okay. No, uh, uh, the good news is is that uh, I'll be back. I'll be back, as uh, my our dear governor says. So- <laughs> uh, but not for a while. But when I do, man, I'll, I'll, I'm going to find your, your little... Yeah, uh, I know, man. I'm going ta- to take you golfing, which is basically... Oh, my God, yeah. Ed, did Ron, for those of you uh, who don't know him as well as I, uh, he basically... He keeps well, his, who does really? He basically he, <laughs> he does acting to feed his golf habit. He's, he says, <laughs> oh, don't we all run? Don't we all? Oh yeah, you're yeah. a bit of a, I like a golf, golf habit. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I had to. I did I went on the bat burner when I had children. So I thought, well, golf will always be there, but the kids, you know, they're not always going to be the little ones. So <laughs> that's going to How 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 many you got? I got two. I got one who's five, and one who's two. Yeah, little girl, oh, little okay. boy. Yeah, but I got two as well. You'll be. You'll be back playing golf. Oh uh, yeah, two, 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 three more years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> once dry, once they start, out. I'm just gonna have to warn you about this, and, and you know, it's it's. No, well, maybe I shouldn't. It's no, so on. depressing. <laughs> no, go on. Um, I like depressing. Well, you you're about to find this out from your five year old. Oh yeah. You know, for those first five years, when all of their thoughts are from you and mom, they're mm. so cute and adorable, and then they. Then you send them out to school and they start coming home with other families' opinions about you. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you know, <laughs> you, it, it, you, you question, uh, it's, it's, it's Nietzschean, you know, yeah. the, 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 what it does to your, your, the blow it has on the human condition. Is there, are yeah. there, because Tom lives in a small village, could you give us a, an example of, of a kind of a, uh, a, a Ron Perlman misbelief that, that came out of your child's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> well, it's been so long. I, both my kids are in their thirties now. I, I just oh, remember really um, they just, you know, everything that was coming out of them was an extension of our little exchanges for yeah. for a goodly goodly amount of time. Yeah. 
And then and then they started going to fucking school. And which was your first and, mistake. <laughs> Should have high school. And they they started to say, "Well, Zoe's family <laughs> does it this way." <laughs> And, uh, you know, it turned out Zoe's family were all crackheads and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. didn't, well, let me tell you something about Zoe's family, okay, before you start. Let me, let you me know, tell you. I was, ready to, I was ready to pull that out of my ass if I needed to. <laughs> <laughs> it's always there, yeah. A, plus, couple of, a couple of good swats with the belt and didn't mention Zoe anymore. Yeah, so, just wipe you know. the memory. Wipe the short-term memory. <laughs> plus, Tom is from Leicestershire, which is known to be full of crackheads. Yeah. Many crackheads. Oh, yeah. Is that true? <laughs> no. no. I don't think so. I hope not. There probably is some, but... I hope it's not true, you know, because now it's going to seem like a statistic and not a joke. There was a massive out outburst uh, of um, coronavirus meth. cases there because... Uh, meth. Also probably meth, yeah. But the uh, there was a huge... In, in some clothing factory, apparently it was some company were, were doing something dodgy with their, the way they have their workers and all in close, close environments. Oh, really? There was a massive outbreak. Yeah. of uh, COVID cases. So when well, we went to if, lockdown. If, if you're from a place that can count on one finger um, the amount of massive outbreaks that took place, <laughs> you're way ahead of the curve, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, man, I can't keep up with the... We're, we're locked down, then we're opening up, and then we're locked down again because yeah. we opened up too fast. You know, I mean, it's, just, it's, it's nuts here, man. It's and where, where are you, Ron? Whereabouts are you in the States? Mm. I'm in an uh, undisclosed location in uh, the <laughs> state of California. <laughs> right, okay. So I'm in, I'm in my new home in Pasadena. Oh, oh Pasadena, lovely. lovely. And is this kind of wave of indecision, is it coming from the state level or dare I say from the, the big orange pumpkin? Well, it's funny you should ask that. Um, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's all completely directly at his feet. Mm. The, uh, the chaos, the, the, um, the politicization of everything, um, all of which has... Um, um, at its root, uh, the most diabolical of motivations. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, dast just, just he, this is a dastardly motherfucker. It seems just like he, wait, who, are, who are we to... talking about, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> is this your last Elvis producer? Of, Elvis, of course. <laughs> Elvis, yeah. Yeah. I knew the king. <laughs> but he seems we, to be are, trying are to... We, are we rolling now? Yeah. Yeah, rolling. yeah, sorry. This wasn't yeah. preamble. You came straight oh, good, in good. on the air. <laughs> yeah, because... Some of this shit is just gold. Yeah. Uh, gold well, dust. well, at, at least brass. Yeah. Um, it's, but it's, yeah. It's the same color as gold. Sort of dis discolored yeah. copper. Or it's gold. It's gold plated. Let's put it that way. And what about uh, what about him trying to seemingly change the the democratic system in your country? That's slightly alarming. Or it seems like that's the ulterior motive with the whole uh, well, the perversion service. of mm. the postal vote. Well, you. The, the 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 dismantling of the rule of law and democracy as we know it is a byproduct of his um, appetites and his uh, predilections and his proclivities, all of which are psychologically um, uncurable. Mm -hmm. um, none of which he should be actually ever let out in public having the compendium compendium of of, uh, of of sociopathic qualities that he possesses and yet he's the leader of the free world mm -hmm. and how this came to pass i mean if, if there's anybody here on this zoom call <laughs> who can fucking tell me how in the fuck because this is shit it, it's like it's unprocessable mm -hmm. that you would find a guy the least equipped guy yeah. to actually go out in public uh or, or go anywhere but a jail cell, who's the president of the United States of America and from that high office is uh, in his quest for the things that um, are uh, purely self-indulgent. Yeah. You know, his, his, his need for attention, his mm. need for power, his need for everybody to agree with him, his need for everybody to pat him on the back and mm. tell him how fucking beautiful he is. Um, is so you ruling it, you, from 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 a place where there are these unintended consequences, meaning the the, the complete downfall and decay of the rule of law, because he's up, you know, all of those things 
it, there are no rules when 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 you're a slave to those that compendium of of of, of needs. It's almost like the uh, rash, rational systems we've created could be undermined by the irrational, completely, mm-hmm. literally, the irrationality of one human being seems to have been a strange contagion that takes something completely, as you'd imagine, watertight and like well, rational, just out. One hundred percent, Trump is not didn't appear out of nowhere. He is the symptom of a country that unfortunately is quite broken and people feel very disenfranchised. But why they feel like that's what they want to have represent them is beyond me, absolutely. I mean, just to put this in context, I left, I've been here for 14 years. I left because of George Bush Jr. Because in my opinion, it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> and look how wrong I am. <laughs> We we long for George, the days of George. <laughs> right yeah, now. Bring back George. Like, what you just want to go to war in the Middle East? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah cool. <laughs> that great guy, man. He owned a baseball team. He was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and what a golfer! He had it right. And yeah, and a fine little dancer too. A lot of people don't know that about. But it's about, true that uh, maybe George Bush subs. Sort of, he may have sort of set the, set things in motion a little bit because I think it was clear with him that he had father issues. Do you know what I mean? He was, yeah. he was very like an Umbrella Academy sibling <laughs> in that he was trying to sort of live up to his father's expectations. And so this irrationality at this man's core, he got back in because people forgave him time and time again and sort of called it, I don't know, charming or whatever. Mm. But it allowed for a man of great irrationality and sort of... Uh, unhideable irrationality to take yeah. the throne, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, and you want to think it's, having you on. Well, yeah, so, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, having you on right now uh, at this time was so great that Rob suggested it because I know the elections are right around the corner. Yeah, and, and this, this contentious time. And you in are. But well, we hope that there are elections around the corner. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Literally, any, 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 any norm. Anything that's prescribed, even in the, the the founding documents, none of it is is safe. None of it is 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 uh, above being fodder for him to um, manipulate and destroy and 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 say that doesn't make any sense. Mm. Um, we had our Democratic National Convention last week, which was and then, and then tonight starts the Republican one, and his response to the four days of listening to how um, rational adult people are going to try to repair uh, the, 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 uh, the sewage problem we have, because really what we have is like, it's, 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 it's not, it's, it's not even sociopolitical anymore. It's, it's that mm, it's the shit that. Yeah. is seeping up through the ground and it's, it's at our ankles. It's a trauma. No, it's, it's in our, it's, it used to be at our ankles. I, I, like you long for the days of Bush. I long for the days when the shit was just at our ankles. <laughs> it's getting close to our waists. And by the time the election comes, because, you know, everything is going to get sped up because he knows mm. he's losing, it's going to be up to our necks. Mm. And um, I don't know where I was going with that, with that metaphor. What about, um, <laughs> it, was, well, it was the journey, baby. Yeah, yeah. But what about, I, I, just, I, just hope, I just hope none of our viewers are having lunch right now. <laughs> But Joe Biden, I heard um, he, I heard he did a pretty inspiring speech the other night. I didn't, I didn't watch it, but my mate was, was telling. It was me. good. It was, it was. I wouldn't say it was um, um, aspirational or mm-hmm. inspirational or the things that I kind of. I feel as though those elements are unfortunately a part of what people respond to, mm-hmm. the showbiz aspect of of leadership. I think that the fact that. The reason why Trump has the the kind of uh, support that he does is because uh, of how he's like you can't take your eyes off him mm. for all the wrong reasons. Mm, but yes. he he's 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 so outrageous and he's mm. so um, uh, incomprehensible what he might say or do next. I know that that's from absorbing you know. Television. People kind of have replaced that for like he must be fucking cool if he could be that like out there all yeah, the time. Yeah, that, that's got to be somebody who who can solve all my problems. Do you think, that, <laughs> so, that, Ron, that there's like there's just all the people around him who could who could enact some change or to sort of who are the support structure? Are they all chicken shits? Are they all, you know, are they all just in constant I, I obeisance? I, of I think I think there's a good degree of chicken shittery. 
yeah. uh, happening. Uh, but I also think that it's it's um, it's more diabolical than that. I mean, I wish it was just chicken shittery because you know the, 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 that kind of thing is replaceable. What's not what what is? I think the thing that probably um, is the most because a lot of this is you know we can joke about it and we can you know. The witnessing of this big a swath of the American public, um, even um, for one second, mistaking this as leadership, and more specifically as American leadership, is, and the fact that the, that the election, you know. It, it could go either way, even to this day, mm. because the swath is way bigger than any of us imagined it would it, it would be. Um, that's the part of it that is um, the most debilitating to me, because you can't legislate your way out of that. You can't. Um, uh, you can't. You know, th there's not enough time to change that kind of those sentiments that are that are that reside so deeply in so many hearts in this country in this world i mean it's, you're having the same problems in europe with um uh the the, the onslaught of of people changing borders because they can't they have to get out of where they are for you know one reason or another and so they're showing up in london and all of a sudden this there's a, a, a national national fervor that's being born in london that mm -hmm. you know it's like holy shit i I didn't know people were this can, could be this adamantly Nazi esque in a way, you know, in terms of um, protecting their whiteness, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. um, I'm sure that this is not what you wanted to talk to no, me about. It is. So. No, it is. But also yeah. that, that, and we're constantly shown it. You know, I, I opened my phone the other day on something, and you know, social media has that incredible ability to you could be entirely focused on a task that you want to perform. And then as soon as you open the platform, you're like, mm. and I was sort of caught in that window of madness where it's essentially it's like you're paying admission. You're going to watch some shit or see some shit before you get to do your thing. And it was a, a, a series of BBC news reports where they were out uh, in the Mediterranean. They were showing, um, they were showing immigrants on boats heading towards Dover. You know, they were about 50 miles off of Dover. But it was just the constant reporting of it. And then, I, of course, I watched the next article with, with those 15 to 20 immigrants being picked up on a, uh, from a speedboat by the Coast Guard. And the BBC was there. So the guy was sort of on the side of a boat going, and they're just being picked up now by the Coast Guard. And, you know, but there was this, there was this sense that the country had to... You know, the news, you know, it makes its agenda, fair enough, but... Sometimes I wonder is is the is the ulterior motive to I I inspire in us a sense of nationalism, you know, mm. tribalism, defense, make us concerned for our borders when in fact I, I don't know if that's our, uh, you know of any oh, of our concern yeah, that's why we have as you say legislation we have ways and means of either bringing people into the country which aren't just of course but it just felt like uh, those those fires, those emotional fires, were were being helped to be stoked up by the by the BBC. Well, yeah, when 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 those in power who um, you know are are in in the last gasp attempt to keep keep America white, keep America you know the way it was in 1950, uh, because they they absolutely know. They're inches away from their days being numbered in terms of you know being a majority rule in this in this place is gonna is is, is shifting under their feet to a in, at a pace that is making them panic and so mm. the, their their response to it unfortunately is incredibly extreme to the point where you feel as though you're in a kind of a cold civil war mm. yeah. which could become a hot civil war you know. Just like that, yep, very I feel as though the, the, the you know the response to the George Floyd thing and, yep. and what that engendered was a lot. Of, of course, the act of it itself was outrageous and unprocessable, and watching it was heart rendering. But um, 
because of the, 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 the climate in general um, and the tinderbox nature of where everybody's at, because in getting back to our, our fearless leader, you know, the, the, the Cheeto, um, well, you know, uh, he's created this, this climate. It's, it's us against them. Everything is, you're either on this side or you're on this side. The whole notion of our commonalities and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, humanity in many one, you know, all of the mm. great aspirations about uh, taking a society that is heading in a certain direction and embracing that and, and and then finding a way to celebrate it to i mean it doesn't it doesn't mean you're relinquishing law and order it means that you are embracing reality yeah. that uh as the world becomes more unfriendly in certain places they become safe havens in other places those places are going to see um a lot of influx of of of, of you know new blood but um you know, there's two ways to respond to it. There's, there's, there's this thing that he's doing, which is, um, and I, I, I'm getting back to his response to the Democratic oh, uh, yeah. National Convention. Mm. He, he was on the air, uh, I guess, Friday night when it was all over with, saying, uh, if these guys get in, it, you're done. America's finished. Yeah. It's going to be chaos in the streets. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's going to be no more churches. There's going to be no more police departments. And the only one that stands between that doomsday that I'm describing to you and the real United States of America is me, Donald Trump. I'm the only one that can fix it. Now, he said that four years ago when he first got elected. And a lot of us motherfuckers were going, <laughs> yes, so funny. Yeah, yeah, the I only remember. one that can fix it. And yet he became president of the United States. So, um, you got to take everything like, holy shit, I didn't realize this could happen, but yeah. this can happen because it's happened. It's it's our reality. What was your um, what was your reaction, Ron? Like when when it happened when he first got elected, what was your what was your immediate sort of? How did you deal with that? Personally, I, I went um, on the attack. Uh, you know, I I I, I went on the attack uh, very hard and heavy. Mm. And um, I kind of uh, created a, a make-believe uh, presidential campaign, <laughs> which which gave me my platform on which to go on the attack. Sure. Because as you could see, all of the things that make us make life worth living, the you know, empathy and decency and generosity and, and looking out for the other guy and all these beautiful, you know, aspirational things that are in all of our founding documents and that are all over the Bible that are in all of our churches and synagogues, you know, all of that stuff was under siege. Um, yeah. It was too early for most people to see that it was under siege, but I certainly felt it was. And so I mounted this kind of fake, like, you know, I actually took a picture of myself on election night before the election had ever been, <laughs> been, uh, you'll pull this up uh, when you, when you edit all yeah, this, yeah. but there's a picture of me like this looking into the camera um, saying, you know, I, I'm here by using my immense social media following <laughs> to announce my candidacy for president of the United States for 2020. And um, overnight, I got 250,000 new followers. <laughs> my first, Amazing. my first uh, tweet after my announcing that was um, Mexico just called and say that, and said that they would be thrilled to pay for the wall. And God bless any American who tried to get over it. <laughs> um, was there so, a, was there a time, Ron, where it was it was fake, but there was a degree of reality to it at any point? Well, it was it was partially some sort of a therapeutic, uh, you know, exercise on my part because you know, like anybody who starts a sentence, if I rule the world. <laughs> Yeah, there's a little yeah. bit of like you know, slightly like, yeah, troubling. Yeah, you know what what what, what would happen? If I were, <laughs> wow, wow, chocolate would be the only flavor. <laughs> you know, I mean, you start to like ruminate on like how cool it would be. Yeah. So yeah, there was a there was a, there was a, a a few percentage points of like, um, uh, I'll get to the the, the 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 point of why I had to stop it, but. Um, 
I, I kept this thing going for, for a while, for like maybe a year. Mm. And what it, what it was was an opportunity for me to articulate the things that were under attack, mm. the things that were trying to be rolled back, you know, like uh, this whole voter suppression thing is basically just rolling back uh, the legislation in the 60s. And this whole attack on Social Security is just rolling back the New Deal in the 30s and 40s. I mean, these guys want to go back to slavery and they want to go back to, you know, um, uh, you, you, you name it. You know, Robert Barron kind of like the one percent gets everything and everybody else. You can go fuck yourself. And that's 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 the America. Let's make America great again. That's that's what they're kind of describing. Mm. Um they're, 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 but they have these really cute little hats and they're red and they, they, you know, they glow in the dark and, you know, there's a lot of people who really want one. Um, <laughs> they glow in the dark? I didn't know that. All I right. want one You're, too. I want one. Yeah. Yours, yeah. See what I'm saying? It's, it's irresistible. It's like, it's like, you know, um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? So uh, the, 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 the the fake the faux presidential campaign was an attempt of me uh like articulating the anti-platform you know the platform that would return us to rule of law that would return us to not having all of your cronies be you know the whole cabinet i mean you know one of the one of the most sick twisted thing that's happening is that he appoints for the Department of the Interior a big oil guy mm -hmm. who wants to destroy every protected piece of land that there is. What he's done with this, you know, the, 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 the post office now, which is this latest thing, is a guy who owns $350 billion worth of stock in FedEx. Wow. He doesn't want any goddamn post office. First thing he does is, he, you know, he, he takes 600 sorting machines, puts them out of business, and starts lifting mailboxes from the street in the thousands and putting them in unclosed places. Oh my That's God. the first thing he does. Part of that is, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, I don't, I don't have enough money from the $350 billion of shares I have in, in FedEx, so I really could use a little bit of a break. <laughs> but part of that is if, if there's no post office, you can't vote by mail, and the only way Trump can win is if the election is rigged and if, if every vote doesn't or if only half the votes count. Do you, so, think, do you think, Ron, um, he's, he's setting it up so that he, whatever happens in terms of the result, he, he, he now has grounds to query it because he's distorted the process. So, like, whatever happens, he's going to go, no, I don't accept the result. I'm going to stay as Mr. <laughs> Etc. Do you know what I mean? I think he's, he did he's, that. He, he did because he knew he was going to lose in 2016 and he was already talking about how he was going to contest the election because it was rigged. And then when he won, he went, Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> now, you know, you don't have to be real smart to know this motherfucker is like, yeah. you know, he's so, something broken. In he's him. like, he's like, he's, he's not even a smooth criminal. <laughs> he's a stupid fucking criminal. Yeah. And he's, he's like, any chance you have of a fair shot in this country and the people who vote for him are the ones who need the fair shot more than anybody. Mm. I don't fucking need it. I'm doing great. You know, it doesn't really matter to me who, what happens. You know, I got a five picture deal. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew this, but now, I, I just, this is the kind of arrogance will get you elected, Ron. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> why do you think I, I, you know, I got on my high horse, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, that's what that was. So it was, it was, it was my, I was using it as a kind of a, 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 a little kind of, you'll pardon the expression, umbrella uh, on which to articulate the, an, an alternative to the, 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 tri, the, 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 tri, the trist, the Trump doctrine. <laughs> um, one day I get a call and I hope my son's not watching this, but my son calls me up one day. My son is this beautiful, beautiful, uh, so, so sweet. And he ha has his own record label and he's a very, very celebrated DJ. He composes underground house music. His name's Delroy Edwards. If you look him up on 
on Google. He like thirty nine pages come up, and he's but he's just he's he's way more artistic than me, and he's way more pure than me. And he's very gentle. And one day he calls me up and he goes, um, "Hey, Dad, can I ask you a question?" Go, yeah, sure, bro. I call him bro. He's my he's my son. Why do I call him bro? Anyway. <laughs> We'll get to that in the psychiatric portion of our of our podcast. (laughs) Um, He said, "This president thing that you're doing, are you serious? Because if you're serious, man, I'll you know I'll 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 back you and everything." I go, "Um, "Well, not really. Why do you ask?" He goes, "Well, they're not coming after you, but they're coming after me. You know, they they're like this thing is like you know like." People are going, hey, your fucking dad and your fucking dad's got a big fucking mouth. And, you know, and I'm going, holy shit. I didn't realize, you know, the, the the collateral damage I was doing to my loved ones by, you know, yapping away and, you know, making all these like for me, it was just a big goof. Yeah. And so um, that was the last kind of put, uh, 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 presidential. Uh, mm. That was the end of that. Do you, what, what, what does your gut tell you about the elections, Ron? What does your gut tell you? I don't see how he wins. I don't see I how he not. wins. God, it would be a terrible day. Um, I don't see that, uh, you know, I just, the forces that allowed him to win in 2016, and he didn't, you know, he he, he lost by 3 million votes. Yep. So, you know, the there were these battleground states where it was so close and he squeaked it out and, you know, he was able to get the Electoral College victory. I, I believe that was all rigged. I believe that was all the work of Putin and stuff. I don't really think he was ever elected to anything. But um, this is this is what the, this is what this is what the, this was the, the verdict. The verdict came down, and now we're living in this reality. But I don't see how he can win. But I I'm staying humble. You know, I'm staying like really. You know, I'm I'm not taking any risks. I'm not taking any chances. I'm. I'm still doing, you know, crazy ass posts every day, you know, to try to just take care of my little portion of the rock, you know, mm. which is tiny, but um, there you have it. You know, we all have to do what we have to do what we what we can because we're beating back fascism. Yeah. yeah. And we're beating back a form of government that we have been usually at war with mm-hmm. uh in our history. And um we're beating back systematic racism. We're beating back corruption. We're beating back all of the things you see in the lowliest of banana republics. Mm. Um, and the thing that has been uh, so debilitating to so many of us is that for these four years, 65% of us feel this way, including the intelligence agencies and, um, you know, a lot of former very, very heavy duty generals and, you know, heads of CIA, heads of FBI and stuff know the, 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 the unraveling that he's done of, of all of the sacred institutions and no one's done anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's no one the... has been able to mount a, a, a successful, you know, like, sorry, sir, that was a little, uh, you went a little too far here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we tried impeaching him. We did impeach him, but he had all these. You you asked earlier, like what's what's going on with the other with the other side, um, uh, or even his the, side. Do you know what I mean? Even with his with, with his protectors, you know the guys who are protecting him. Oh. Um, they they they're holding their nose. I mean, clearly, he, you know, even they just realized, holy shit, that as as a front guy. This guy's making us all look really, really bad. But bad. what he's doing for for the courts, like how he's loading up the courts with with activist, conservative, racist judges, and how he's loading up, uh, you know, especially the Supreme Court. He's had two picks. He's changed. He's going to change the, the the course of the American justice system for decades to come. So they 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 get in line, and uh, he knows it, and they know it, and. We're watching it happen in real time, and uh, we've never quite seen anything like this. And so we, guys like us, sit around on podcasts going, "Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do." <laughs> and I still, 
and I don't even know. I don't even know. Vote I Biden. Know the answer. <laughs> yeah. huh? Vote gonna, Biden. I tweet. I tweet. Therefore, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Well, you know, Donald could say the same thing, but he's a, he's as he's as avid a tweeter, if not more, perhaps. Is he oh, still yeah. tweeting? Does he uh, think yeah. so? Yeah, very yeah. inarticulately. He's yes. peripatetic. He's, oh, that's yeah. not the word I'm looking for, but I, I just had to use that word in a sentence. Absolutely. <laughs> I was determined. I said, "I'd like to hear gonna, Donald I'm, use." I'm going to hang with my boy Robbie. I've always called you Robbie. You have. Do your close friends call you that? Do you mind being called that? Because yeah. you always go by Robert. I don't mind. I least sort of leave it up to whoever. Else. Does the world know about our history? Like how far back we go? And well, it's funny you say my name, the thing about my name, because the, when I first sat down at a chat with you, it was at the read through of Season of the Witch, starring Nicolas Cage and Ron Perlman, and to a lesser extent, me. And uh, we were at the read through. To a lesser extent, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, when Nixon, when, when Nixon the thing, yeah. There's only one name above it's, the title. It's the Nick, yeah, big time. Yeah. But he, um, but I remember my name was written on my script, and you sort of went, "Is that your name?" <laughs> and I went, "Yeah, yeah," because I just, <laughs> I was like, but yeah, "Did you yeah. steal that script? Is that, else? <laughs> Is that really you?" I've been doodling or something. So that was when, yeah, that was when, that was when we kind of first officially met, which was when I was twenty, which was twelve, wow. twelve years ago. I was twenty-three. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Older, wiser. And we were in... Me too. Well, I'm older anyway. <laughs> we were in uh, Budapest, weren't we? And then we were in Austria. We shot this film in the most remote, beautiful location. I think we started in Austria. We kind of w- w- wended our way from uh, west, the westernmost part of Austria all the way across some beautiful mountainsides yeah. And eventually ended up in Vienna for two weeks where they have this 14th century castle. Kreuzenberg. That yeah. Well, that's, that's now, a, a, I guess, a, a kind of a tourist attraction. But they let us have it for two weeks to do our filming. And it's like, you know, it couldn't have been more perfect what we were trying to do. It's amazing. And then uh, we got all that location stuff done and moved to Budapest for, for, the, for the, the biggest chunk of the movie. Yeah. yeah. Budapest um, is a great town. Well, it's, oh, it's a cracking town, yeah. yeah. It's a brilliant town. Oh, we it's two saw... towns, actually. It's yeah. two towns. Yeah. It's Buddha and it's Pest. And Pest. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that until I got there. Yeah, yeah, which was the party one? There's one that's Pest. more of a party town and one's more of a chilled one. Oh, it, de- it depends. It depends who's holding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like if you're, in, if you're in, in Buddha and you got really good shit, Buddha is the party town. Yeah, you can, you can you're make it happen over that. Yeah. And you it's, got some really even better shit. <laughs> pest is definitely, you know what I'm saying. It really goes down. Buddha bread, pest, water. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. This is... This bread is and what, water. This is what it means bread. in old... That's how I'm going to end up. <laughs> some, sort of, some sort of prison one day. Goes, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, if the elections don't, don't go the way <laughs> we want, you might end Look up in an American my, gulag. My, <laughs> hey Ron, going back to what you were you were talking about your son catching the flack for you making being vocal about running for politics for being president, which honest God, I really wish you would because you'd make a hell of a president. Yeah, you really would. But then I'd be your thinks, first. I think man. so much about everything that's good and bad about technology. But what is with why would trolls on the internet start hitting a man's family? Mm. You know, that's like that old gangster thing. Like you don't you don't mess with someone's kids. I mean that. Why in this day and age is that acceptable? You know, how do you deal with that kind of stuff? Like, uh, like uh, Lee Strasberg said in uh, Godfather Two, this is the business we are in. Mm. Mm. Did he say that? <laughs> he did now. Sounds right. <laughs> we'll go with it. That man was Mo Green. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, this you know, don't get me started on, like, the fact that, you know, it used to be you needed credentials to, you know, to be in, in, in you know, out in the world spouting opinions. And, you know, you needed yeah. a platform. You needed, either needed to be a journalist or and you needed a, a face, talking head on, you know, on TV. You know, now that there's, there's all the social media, everybody, everybody is their own host of their own talk show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh not everybody is willing to play by the rules of human decency, you know, um, you know, and, I, oh, sorry, uh, go on, Ron. you know, I, I actually think, you know, 
it can be such a, a unifying thing, but it also can be that other thing where it's it's an excuse to uh, for people to you know um, act out their frustrations and their angers and their yeah. jealousies and you know they see somebody on 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 Instagram doing good. And, you know, they want to shoot them down or they want to take them down. They want to take them out. You know, like that's how they're going to get their jollies and feel like they have some sort of leverage in the world. And so it I've comes heard... with the territory, unfortunately. I don't know if that answers the question, yeah. but I, it's I, certainly, I... you know, part of the malaise, yeah. uh, you know. The global forum. Mm. John Ronson did this thing about shame and modern shame having no face on social media and people hiding behind handles and whatever phony profile pictures, but he said that there, he, he um, referenced this American case where a young guy had killed two people drunk driving while he was while he was driving. And there was a particularly melodramatic judge in the US who um, p- punished him by giving him time, but also he, he walked up and down the highway where the, the accident occurred with a big sandwich board on him saying, I killed two people driving in my car because of alcohol don't don't be me you know what i mean something like that mm. and at trafficy times instead of people throwing apple cores at him and abuse there was this outpouring of compassion the guy said you know because the guy was there and he was enacting his punishment right in front of people and so the response was you poor thing listen good on you fair play and don't worry you're going to get through this and he said it was almost unanimous support and encouragement because people were face to face and there's such a dehumanization in the interaction of social media that goes on where i don't know Funny, i was just i just was on a, a, another uh, talk thing regarding politics and stuff and the uh, the, the host was telling me the story about how um, he, cause he's, he's a, he's left wing guy, very liberal guy. And, you know, um, he's a target he becomes a target for the other side. They want to, you know, and he got this letter that was like so incendiary and so angry. It was almost in flames when he opened it up and, um, he responded to the person and said, thank you for your letter. And, and I really appreciate your, uh, taking the time, you know, and, you know, listen, this is. I, I, I get what you're saying and I, I don't disagree with you, but I look at it this and the, and the person immediately disarmed mm. and became kind and beautiful because he was treated with decency. He was, he was treated like a human being. The assumption was I'm going to go after this guy who's, who's people have told me is my enemy because he thinks a certain way and he's an inanimate object. But the minute you engage with people, I mean, it, it, this story that you tell is is quite beautiful because people are essentially forgiving mm. and uh, compassionate mm. and you know and and want to have exchanges want to know that you see them you know and it's so mm. uh the act of dividing us which is actively i mean that's back to the big dilemma that we've been talking about is uh, unforgivable. Yeah, it's 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 deliberate. They know they're doing it. They know that they're playing on the lowest impulses in the human psyche, the ones that don't exist on a day to day basis. If you're just, you know, living the laws of human decency, mm-hmm. they have to be inspired they have to be you know um activated mm. and it's unforgivable it's to me the the thing that's unforgivable is that these these all of these right-wing politicians are utilizing that to their to, to their advantage um to uh trivialize anything that doesn't reflect their values, mm-hmm. unfortunately, their values are, you know, white supremacy, uh, wealth at all costs. Uh, uh, you know, there are no rules. There are no laws for guys like us. You know, it makes me think and, of uh, the modern social media and trolling makes me think of the KKK. They wear mm-hmm. white hoods. 
so that way they can act out their most ugliness, ugliest side. Yeah, you know, yeah, and to reveal and their faces. Maybe that's being a bit harsh. Maybe it's not. I mean, fuck. You know, well, they're doing yeah. as much damage. You know, there's people that commit suicide because of trolling. You know, it's yeah. like it's a horrendous thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right, the, the, the act itself has to be taken out of it in order yeah. to go to those low... You know, and you and the way you use social media places. is like a ballroom, a barroom brawl. I mean, it's... A ballroom brawl. A ballroom brawl. <laughs> you know, like you're getting out there, you have the <laughs> scores, that. you have banter. That's a good things. idea. That's a good idea. I'm going to I'm gonna take the ballroom <laughs> For, for the whole rest of today, yeah. yeah. See, but you, see what, but you, see where yeah. you have a voice, you have an opinion, yeah. you're you putting tap out dance there. it out. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's ah, it's a weird old world. <laughs> it's a yeah. strange old world. Um, I'm sorry, I had a thought and I just completely lost it. <laughs> well, we, we're, we'll start working on your visa papers for the UK, Ron. In terms of uh, staying a bit longer, do you know what I mean? We'll start. We'll start naturalizing. Yeah, uh, I was supposed to come over in January, and then some one of the cast members of this thing I'm going to do over there got pregnant with twins, and so oh, uh, it won't be till later in the year. We oh, had talked wow. about that the other day. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. A, I did. A, I did a show over there called uh, the Capture. The BBC, called the Capture, which um, um, they ordered a second season, uh, which oh, surprised great. everybody because. I'm not used to being in things that are successful. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, 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 yeah, right. the one thing that I've managed to do really, really well in my career, Robbie, is wire myself for failure. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really like, I'm prepared for like completely crashing and burning. And, well, know, then you never a, will. A, a bloody, and, you know, and, and then if anything good happens, you're like, whoa, whoa, yeah. that? exactly, That's, yeah, wow. You know, but um, uh, it's a good way to be. Because, yeah, yeah, that's you know, true you, humility. You're usually not disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And there's no such thing anymore. Yeah. No expectation, no disappointment. That's a great fundamental for young actors to have. I think. Yeah, if you have that from day one. No, no people. expectations, no disappointments. Yeah. That's 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 that was a motto that I picked up uh, a few years back, and serves you well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, when things go right in our business, uh, it's 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 kind of a rarity. It is. Um, it's it's surreal. so many so many things have good that have to happen yeah. in order for for something to break through and and you have some some universal appreciation and, and have some longevity. And so um, we keep trying, but uh, yeah. Um, don't ever expect it because oh, yeah. that's that's a bad that's a bad place to put yourself. Yeah. In. Oh yeah, I, 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 uh, I, you guys go back to work soon, right? Je- uh, right? Well, yeah, yeah. We don't know. It hasn't been officially recommissioned, so really, it's I still mean, a doubt. No, well, there's no doubt, but that will essentially dictate, confirm dates. Mm, yeah. You know, once it's uh, and we well, probably, I, we probably I'm going back in this. three weeks uh, to a movie that we had shot 45 percent of in Toronto, right? They, yeah, which they put a pin in. That's what you shoot. Yeah, um, yeah. Should we? Oh, my friend Jesse, who's a trained clown. He trained in the school of Molière in Paris. Don't you know? Uh, and he is doing a few days on your movie. And he said, if you ever want to have a home cooked meal, um, go around Jesse's. On uh, Nightmare Alley. Yeah, it's just around the corner from there. Yeah, it's next <laughs> near Trinity Bellwoods. <laughs> no, no. That- yeah, that's yeah, the movie. That's, yeah, he's on that. that. Yeah, that's where he lives. He lives in Nightmare Alley. Eh? Oh, it's around the corner from Nightmare Alley. Yeah, it's I live next. in Nightmare Alley. <laughs> um, the no, that's the name the of the, the project we're doing. Yeah, uh, but yeah, okay, I'll I'll, uh, I'll look Jesse up. He's uh, a good man. I'll yeah, connect he, you if he's a trained clown. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll all be part of the same because I'm part of the, the the movie is is actually almost two movies. The first half takes place in this carnival, and I'm one of the carnival performers. And the second place. The guy is so good at what he does. He goes into the big city and does this carnival act, but for high society. Oh, and then that's the second half of the film. Uh, so we shot. They shot that. We're about to shoot all the carnival stuff though, and it's starting in September. And I guess if we get through that without incident, and you know, all of the new protocols uh, are working because you know, Screen mm, Actors Guild, yeah. DGA. Ayatsi, all the guilds have their own hundreds and hundreds of pages of r- rules and regulations yeah. 
in order to even allow for this to to take place. Yeah. By the time you guys shoot, um, a lot of a lot of production will have been tried and tested. Yeah. yeah. And uh, hopefully it'll go. You know, there'll be a lot of trial and error. When do and uh, when do you wrap? Uh, ho hopefully, Ron, all going to plan. You go back in September. When do you wrap? Um, there till the end of November. Oh. Yeah, we probably unfortunately. Will. So well, we don't. I, I we don't. might cross over with you, Ron. I'm doing a movie over there in October, so I might cross over with you in yeah. Toronto. Definitely, uh, we'll we'll change info. Oh yeah, Robbie yes, has I... all my info. Please, Robbie, all give your info. Yeah, I have yeah, your blood type. I have. Uh, I'll need that. Your, in fact, in your fact, measurements. Why don't you, Why don't you put it on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a it. We'll do a Ron no, no, diagram. <laughs> <laughs> a Ron diagram. Yeah, okay, that's good. But uh, um, oh, it'd be lovely to give you a cuddle for real. I haven't I haven't seen you in ages. Well, that, that's that's imminent. But it God imminent. only knows and what imminent, imminent means these days. In that that project that we must not jinx, but that project is is coming on leaps and bounds, and that might have us back in the car. That was very encouraging, by the way. Reading about all that, very encouraging. Yeah. So we'll um, lock that down yeah. for next year. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's ingrained. In my uh, my spiritual uh, appointment book. Yeah, it's going to be a spiritual convoy. <laughs> it's going to be a. It sure will. The mad slap especially dash. with the with the cast of characters that you that you ran down, <laughs> which we can't announce at we this point. We can't announce. It's way too Watch premature. this space, kids. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, Ron. Well, what else? What else? Are we I, done? I suppose. Uh, you know, I feel like, well, we're not done if you're not done. I mean, we'll gladly juice every last I, bit of podcast I, I, out of you. I already, I already said more than I should have. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Earth Locker. Yeah. There you go. We yeah, bring it out of exactly. them. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what uh, we, we and, were talking? You know, I, 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 I defer to your, your, the kindness of your editor. <laughs> um, you know, because I, I, know I've, I know I've gone too far. I, I usually do, so that's how I know. Not in the slightest. Uh, but anyway, no, uh, I, I, I'm good, man. We yeah. talked a little showbiz. We talked a little, yeah. you know, uh, and as soon as fascism, they, they fascism, get... all, all we hit all the right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and all the <laughs> showbiz and, the show. and yeah. fascism and how showbiz even is... had a, a shout out to chocolate, which you know, I mean, yeah, I'm good now. <laughs> but would it would it taste as sweet if you had introduced it fascistically? That's the real question. Well, that's true. You got no more mint or rocky road, <laughs> no vanilla, just chocolate. I don't know mm -hmm. if it'd be as nice. Oh, you can have chocolate mint. Yeah, that's mm. true. Which I and regularly... there's plenty of chocolate in Rocky Road. I, I happen to know these things. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, <laughs> we should elect him. But there's only there's there's only a small modicum of things I'm an expert in, but dessert is, is definitely <laughs> one of them. Dessert, and I must say, the cocktail. I learned, and I I mm. think it's safe to uh, uh, expose this lovely story since this the film is now 12 years old but we were in budapest in a forest and we got or at least we got me pretty on the way to being drunk before one scene in, in ron's trailer we were sipping stoli and cokes yeah and then we had to do this scene where we were all laid by a campfire and then there's a kind of a witch curdling scream and we all kind of wake up and like go for our swords and we're supposed to run up this hill and we're like in full leather mail and carrying cloaks and half drunk <laughs> we're like we're, still, we're yeah. just like <laughs> it's like an episode of Monty Python <laughs> <laughs> oh it was good times um, good crack did you ever uh, yeah the amount of times that uh, I, I wasn't on the call sheet or I wasn't supposed to be working or I had gotten wrapped and went back to my trailer and, you know, like did what you do when you get wrapped. And they said, hey, we decided to add another scene. Uh, Don't take off your makeup yet. And meanwhile, I'm like whacked <laughs> off my ass, right? You know, some, some, some substance or another. Yeah. And, I, and I have to stand there like, you know. Makeup dripping uh, off your face. I have, I, you know, there was one time I was so fucking wasted at, because they wrapped me and... Um, I go back to my thing and, you know, I, I start smoking on this pipe and shit. <laughs> and they said, hey, we decided to put this scene. It's it's not a big scene. It's only like a page and a half. It's, but it's a love scene with me, me and like, you know, the Beauty and the Beast, right? <laughs> and um, so I get my gear back on. I'm fucking wasted out of my mind. 
And uh, I, I kind of get to the set, you know, I have that real paranoia thing going, like everybody knows I'm stoned, everybody's watching me, you know, like, and I, I find a wall and I said to the director, I'd like to be here. <laughs> so <I> could... <laughs> And, 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 and Linda said, oh, I wanted to be there. I said, do me a favor, just this one time. Just let me, let me have this, this spot, right? This. And so we start, we do it like take one. And it's like the Beauty and the Beast is like this gothic love story or romance. It's overwritten like crazy, like so, like syrupy and stuff. <laughs> and we get, the director goes, cut. We're going to definitely need to go again. <laughs> and Linda looks at me and goes, you're stoned, aren't you? <laughs> you you're stoned, aren't you? <laughs> Your reaction times cop, are terrible. I didn't cop to it. <laughs> well, there was that time, Ron, that I got you stoned, but that was in the fictional world of a film that we did together, which was a different film in Belgium. That's right. Called Moonwalkers. Oh, that was, that was, I was just thinking about that today, knowing <laughs> who I was going to be seeing you. Yeah. Oh, Robert Sheen so is, um, uh, 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 I'm saying this to the general public because all you guys know, but no one thinks like him. No one performs like him. He is uh, the most unpredictable. Oh, yeah. I'll vouch for that, um, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and we had to do this scene where we we're all uh, wasted on, on LSD, right? <laughs> yeah. We were on that big bed together. Me, you, and, and the uh, French I was fighting for my life, <laughs> just trying to like not crack up from the choices <laughs> yeah. that you were making. And, uh, for your your particular character was didn't need any acid to be whacked out of his mind. But <laughs> you put that on top of it, man. It was like every man for himself. <laughs> every man for himself. Oh, it was, it was great times. It was about eight weeks it in was, Brussels. It was good times. Good times. Yeah, I should... Rupert. Yeah, Rupert Grint. Yeah, yeah, it was a lovely, it was a lovely Kevin Bishop, mm -hmm. oh, James Bishop, Cosmo. Yeah. You had, and there was mm -hmm. a lot of like, I don't know about you, Ron. We saw the film. Do you remember that? We saw it at South by Southwest. I'd That's not, right. I'd not seen it, and like, I was quite drunk that night, right? Because it was one of those cinemas where you there's a table be. and there's waiters. Kind of. I wish, I wish, I wish that was more drunk when I saw it. Because <laughs> like. I was incredibly taken back by how the film turned out in, in you, you, one... Were you pleasantly surprised? I was sort of... I, I, I couldn't quantify it in terms of good or bad. It was like... Because it was so explicitly violent, that wasn't something I was expecting. It was so uh, extraordinarily violent. Check out this movie, hmm. Moonwalkers. It's like, and I was like... I think I probably hadn't seen anything of that kind of explicitness for a bit. Plus mm -hmm. drunk. And then they sort of... They sort of coaxed us up on stage and gave us microphones, and they were like, "So, what do you think?" And it's it's I relearned that lesson that I'd learned before, which was never watch the film the first time with an audience. And this isn't to say oh, that I yeah. didn't enjoy it. Really, it was just it was so shocking. It was really, really just knocked me completely yeah. for six. I agree with you on that one <laughs> because it was a f French and Dutch. Uh, production team and the, f oh, the film it's has such a this, weird like this like it's sort of an uh, interesting combination of things you know it mm -hmm. has this intense European flavor with some kind of English, farcical the, English comedy the guy what the English an English writer yeah Dean who wrote I think four weddings and a funeral or something like that he wrote death at a funeral death at a funeral. Oh. I always get those mixed up, those funeral <laughs> movies. Yeah. Funeral in Berlin was also one of them that I, I could have mentioned, but I didn't. He wrote that um, But anyway, um, yeah, it was uh, this uh, hodgepodge. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't supposed to cut together, and parts of it didn't. Um, and on that note. <laughs> but it was extremely fun to make. Yeah. It was extremely funny. So much fun. Even the scene where me and you were improvising for ages and ages, me as Stanley Kubrick and you as a, a, a killer operative of the CIA. Well, you weren't you weren't in any of the because you know I'm a, I'm a, a CIA guy, so you know there's going to be violence at some point. But you were in the other part of the movie where you, it was all artistic and basically on drugs. You were, you were Stanley Kubrick. Um, yeah, we for, were like, doing. for like a scene. 
Oh, Ron, well, let's not leave it too long until we do another one. Well, thanks for inviting me on to this thing, oh, fellas. Yeah, it's been and, nice uh, I can't wait to see your next season of your show. I'm a big fan. Love you guys. It's and day, uh, it's such a delicious, delightful world. And if you haven't uh, checked out Umbrella Academy, make sure you do. Um, thanks so much, Ron. Nice one. <laughs> we you, we should hire you for the podcast. Wait, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't my podcast? Oh, this well, is your podcast. <laughs> People already know about you. Oh, well, fuck it, then. What show am I on? I just, I'm not honest. If show. you're that, that, if you're in lockdown, we could negotiate you in as a host. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Like. yeah. Um, anyway, thank you, fellas. Oh, it's uh, a great uh, pleasure. And, really uh, I can't wait to see you and uh, raise a glass. Absolutely, Thanks, brother. Appreciate nice it. One. Cheers, man. Take golf. care. Take care, man. See, see you guys. Man. God bless. Oh. There goes Ron Pillman. There goes Ron Papa Ron. What a Ron, guy. The king. What a guy. And an interesting Sorry. account, you know, of someone who's inside the walls of a very, very, very contentious mm. situation. It's, it's yeah. hard, you know, you could sort of, you could feel it coming feel it. out of him. Yeah. Feel the alarm that's, that's in him. It speaks for a lot of people right now, I think, yeah. uh, feeling that same sense of uh, powerlessness as well. Like, you know, that feeling of just like wanting to yeah. do something about it. Well, you gotta, be, you gotta be like, you gotta be wrong. You gotta not complacent you gotta get up get a little you gotta, you gotta speak mm. the most important important thing don't ever give away your power and i think that's why trump got in power that's why you know brexit went through yeah people actually thought somebody else would take responsibility mm -hmm. everyone like other hosts say everyone's got to stand up and create the world they want to live in but yeah. also as well they i mean so many people voted for trump yes well. they did remember like so many people did get up and went He's the guy. Do you but, think, Brian, it's to yeah. do with, like, American society is so, you know, the, the American dream encapsulates millions of dollars, that whole, mm -hmm. all the accoutrements that go along with that lifestyle. Do you think he was sort of seen as some kind of winner, do you know what I mean, by Absolutely. folks who... yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, is, it is the American dream, which is the American fantasy, mm. that everyone could be a millionaire, anyone could be president, you know, and not to say that isn't true on some level... Mm. You know, sure, if you work hard, if you're smarter than both. You can campaigns get, need millions of dollars. Yeah, but millions yeah. of dollars. But I think absolutely Trump spoke to that population, still believe the American dream had somehow passed them by, but I embody it, this fantasy. Vote for me and I'll give you your fantasy. Yeah. You know? That's and then, it. Yeah. And then all and all the, the, the Democrats and liberal people and whatever, you know, as a point of contention, chose not to vote for Hillary Clinton because for some reason they didn't like what she stood for. Yeah. decide not to vote because there's no way Trump would get in power. Mm. And just like a lot of things, they just took for granted that you have to participate, you know? You it just to participate. It, it leads you back to the kind of silly puppetry of a two-party system, isn't it? It's so unstable. Yeah. It's I mean, so profoundly unstable. I wish to God we didn't have a two-party system. It seems like every nation kind of does on some level. Yeah, and that's yeah. democracy doing its best. Yeah. And you just think, surely in the... In the future, you think, well, will there be abolition of parties? Because within parties, you have many prominent politicians, all of whom could be leaders, mm. but all stand for different things, you know, as they roll out their policies down the line. And you just think, well, is party politics really the future? Is it not going to come down to, you know, the, well, it's, the things? It's, it's like everything else. I mean, it becomes a self-perpetuating nightmare. That everyone's just little, well, like the research we talk about health industry and all the the grant writing. Mm. So people want to get grant writing from the big pharma companies that keep them in jobs. So they keep doing research on crap that doesn't matter with yeah, medicines yeah. that nobody needs. Not relevant. Yeah. And politics the same way. They're not really interested in changing the status quo because they're invested in the status quo. Yeah. 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 And going back to some of our other guests, you know, we've got to do something really radical mm. and seize this moment in time in history. Yeah. yeah, and we, we as do. individuals have that power yeah. by making the personal choices. That's how it happens, yeah. and by being vocal about it. Yeah, and by liking and subscribing to the <laughs> Earth Locker. Yeah, we will change the world one <laughs> podcast at a time. <laughs> Sharing them ideas, maybe. <laughs> oh, it really? Yeah, is yeah. I, yeah, you know, uh, I've I've never. Well, I, 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 until recently, I I made this big declarative claim on Instagram that I would go plastic free. Yeah, I saw that. Best of my ability. I liked the post. Thank you very much. Mm. And um, once it was out there in the world, I was like, no, now I have to really do it. I have to self-impose. And to be honest, I've been getting an incredible amount of fulfillment. 
from this sort of accumulative um, benevolence, inner benevolence, I feel, mm. from uh, st- my life kind of costing a bit less to the planet. I suppose that was the core of the reason why I wanted to get involved with this podcast. And yeah. Yeah. And sort of, uh, and now that I've actually made a declaration and gone, and now I'm sort of sticking by it, to the best of my ability, I still live in London. I still, you know, there's still plastics well, inside of things that well, you can never like fucking... You'd really specify single-use plastic. And yeah, yeah. absolutely. For the start, the top of the cake, yeah. certainly, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then later on, as you, you go on, you can, I suppose, start to look at other harmful chemicals and things that are being made en masse. And then, essentially, to quote the cliché, be the change, because that is the most effective thing. It is, absolutely. It really is the most effective thing. Yeah, you, know, you so taking control of you is step one. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a massive and difference. Health and for the environment. And yeah, everything, yeah. the whole thing. Because yeah. people, I sometimes think people go, I'm not going to expend the intellectual effort to, to imagine what my life would be if I made that change. Yeah. But then if you come along in their lives and you are living the change, like yourself and in terms of sh- sugar and dialing mm. in your diet to mm. such fantasticness but it's that thing of going oh well you know tom's perfectly happy coping cheerful lovely man you know it not in bad shape not as good as me but you know we'll get into that <laughs> but um <laughs> but you know it just it just makes it so much more real it makes it so much more of a of a thing that will instill change in folks yeah because you're just you're just doing it and you're not you're not leading by example that's the best way to do it sure that's the and one. seeing the positive change from doing it i think if like you say if you see someone you know who's doing it and it's working mm. like this is that that, that yeah. for me is the best example of we're, we're as much inspired it. by the stories we get yeah and then by the people that are well hopefully they listen to this and yeah. uh, give us their stories you know and yeah. create a little bit of community and dialogue that way yeah, yeah. And, and actually then, we can say because we were talking about this about the website construct and our wonderful socials and colorist and website person alice vandy we're going to have an ideas page on the website where we're going to be sharing other good earthling ideas to kind of help make her a healthier planet, healthier self, all that good stuff. And then be Create a put, guide. putting out the call to folks who have found ways of making their lives a little bit more neutral, a little bit more full of meaning, be it through self-sufficiency or environmentalism or diet or whatever it is. And then we can go through those and select those and put up some good, you know, earthling ideas, sharing ideas. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It's all about that. So that's uh, look forward to that. When's the launch, lads? Sometime soon. <laughs> well, this will come out after. The I was going to say this yeah. will come out after. The launch, so yeah. they will. So hopefully September twenty twenty, we will be live with all this, and yeah. you will now be talking about the future. The oh present yeah. And the present. This, Wait, oh. are we creating the present with the future with the. We are. All right, guys. Next time. Next on time. The on the Earth Later, Earth. folks. Woo woo. See like ya. And subscribe. The Earth Lock. The Earth Lock. <laughs> <laughs>
the Earth Locker podcast is opinions of the hosts and of the guests. And it's not Bible. It's not fact. It's just a platform for sharing ideas, right? And all the content of this podcast is solely owned by us. That's right. And copyrights reserved by the Earth Locker. The content here should not be taken as medical or financial or psychological or spiritual or bestial advice. The whole point of this podcast was to bring people who've been who spent their lives studying something on to kind of to share with us what they know, you know, and and then essentially improve planet Earth. So, uh, so the show, the show's for informational purposes. It's for sharing ideas, having a laugh, and because each person is so unique and so saucy, you gotta consult your own doctor for any medical questions. You gotta talk to your financial advisor if you're a big shot on Wall Street. And if you wish to invest in this podcast, we will take any size investment, <laughs> down to twenty pence, anything you have, any spare change. And speak with your elders about personal and spiritual matters. They know shit. They've lived it. You know, all of us slightly younger crowd. We're just riffing. We're just pretending we know. The content of this podcast might have settled during transport and batteries are not included. (laughs) 